Good afternoon, Greater Mount Nebo family. I am Reverend Tamika McFadden, and I will be sharing our afternoon message with you all today um, as we are moving through our 31 days of prayer and fasting. You know, our theme for the year, our theme is the year of revival. And so today I want us to uh, go to God in prayer first, and then we will go into our afternoon devotional. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for another opportunity that you've allowed us to just take a moment and pause, take a moment and pray, take a moment and come to you, dear God, to seek your face. Now, God, have your way. God, even in this hour, in the the mid of the day, God, we ask that you will meet us wherever we may find ourselves. Now, God, bless us and keep us and enlighten us and illuminate our spirits so that we may feel your presence, so that we may know that you are there. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Beloved, our scripture text uh, for our afternoon devotional is coming from the book of Psalm. And we're going to read the 139th Psalm. I'm going to read verses 1 through 6 and verses 13 through 18, coming from the New International Version of the Bible. It reads this way. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know me when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all of my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to obtain. For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. As we are moving through this year of revival, and as we are moving this theme of the year of revival, and we are moving through these 31 days of prayer and fasting, I want to remind each of us today that we have a God who knows us. And that's our topic for our devotional, a God who knows. Psalm 139 is a combination of praise and it is, and it is an appeal and that of a wisdom meditation on and about this God who knows all and who encompasses all. The psalmist of uh, that wrote 139 admits to this God, you know where I live, which is to say God can get to me wherever I may find myself. There is no place to hide. Beloved, and today I want us to remember that we are in community and communion with a God who knows us with a God who knows where we live with a God who knows who we are for many of us in the African-American community when we hear I know where you live we don't always know if that is a good thing or not and beloved I believe this psalmist was no exception we must take note to understand that this psalm that we often quote needs to be understood in its fullest argument. 
The psalmist who is praying is hemmed up and hemmed in by real enemies. This psalmist is hemmed up and hemmed in by injustice. This psalmist is hemmed up and hemmed in by distractors. That is his claim and his appeal to God. And he recognizes that the God who knows all, that the God who sees all, that the God who protects all will not and cannot let this stand. Hence the verse, search me and know me, O God. In Psalm 139, the writer notes that he must not flee to God, that he must not flee. And that God must also come to him and come to his rescue. Beloved, there is no place that we could flee to. There is no place that we could go that God cannot find us. That is encouraging for us today as we are navigating through these 31 days of prayer and fasting. There is not a place where we find ourselves that God is not present. The psalmist understood this. And in these verses, the psalmist began to meditate on God's amazing and incomparable goodness and godness. What is godness? It is God's sovereignty. The psalmist reflected and meditated on God's sovereignty and God's goodness. This psalm is a psalm of praise for the one for the seer, for the knower, for the God who knows him and who knows us. This psalm proclaims a relationship with God, a relationship that is both personal and it is never private. It is this psalm proclaims a relationship with God that is both that is profoundly personal, but never private. And during our season of prayer and fasting this month, let us remember to not only consecrate ourselves, not only consecrate our hearts and our minds and our spirits, but remember that the relationship that we are forming and, and the bond that we are creating with God, we are now co-creative with God. And in that co-creation, we are building relationship with God and we recognize God's sovereignty. Beloved, when we hold fast to the truth that we serve a God who knows, we get the opportunity to proclaim that we have a bona fide relationship with God. In other words, we have been made by God and we have no other choice but to proclaim who God is. We have no other choice but to proclaim God's goodness and God's sovereignty. God is able to call us by name. We as sons and daughters of the Most High God must be able to call God by name. We must be able to call to call God Yahweh. We must be able to call God Jehovah Jireh, the one who provides. We must be able to call God Jehovah Nisi, the one who covers. We must be able to call God Jehovah Shalom, the one who provides peace for us. We have to stand on the fact that in this co-creation of a relationship with God, that we have history with God, that we serve a God who knows us, but God also, and we also know God. We must stand on the fact that we have history with God. And God cares about God's sons and daughters, and God does not want to see us lacking. God does not want to see us in pain. God does not want to see uh, the children suffering. God does not want injustices to reign. And we, as the sons and daughters of God, must stand on the truth of God's gospel. We must stand on the fact that we must hold on to the God who chooses us day in and day out. 
We must hold on to the fact that God still calls us and that God knows us, that God knit us in our mother's womb long before we were even thought about. We must hold on to the fact that we are not by ourselves, that we are not alone, that regardless of the things that are surrounding us or that are attempting to overtake us, we must stand firm on the fact that we know a God who protects, that we know a God who loves us, that we know a God who has chosen us day in and day out, that we know a God who covers us, that we know a God who is our cloud by day and our fire by night, that we know and serve and have a relationship with a God who kisses us good morning every day. And in this season, of prayer and fasting, we must rest on the fact that God knows us and we must consecrate ourselves daily to the work, to the commitment, and to the glory of God. We must stand on the fact and be like the psalmist and know that we get an opportunity to proclaim God's goodness, that we get an opportunity to sit and reflect. And just like the psalmist, if we were to count all of God's blessings and all of God's thoughts toward us, that they would outnumber the grains of sand we must stand on the fact that when we wake every morning and when we lie down every evening, that God is still with us and that God loves us. Beloved, let us pray. God, we thank you. We thank you for knowing us. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for seeing us. Even when we felt unseen. We thank you for holding us close even when we did not want to be. We thank you for being the God who shows up in the midst of our situations and in the midst of our circumstances. And God, we ask even in this moment, even in these 31 days of prayer and fasting, that you would continue to show up for us Continue, God, to open our ears to hear what thus saith the Lord. Continue, God, to stand up in us so that we can be your mouthpiece. Continue, oh God, to wrap your loving arms around us so that we may know that we are never alone. God, in these moments of prayer and consecration, God, renew in us a right spirit. God, so that every day, God, we'll have a fresh, a fresh yes to proclaim to you that every day, God, when we lift our hands, God, we can open up our mouths and tell you thank you. God, every day when we awake, God, and our feet hit the floor, we can open up our mouths and tell you thank you for being with us thanking you for your spirit that lives on the inside of us, thanking you for your spirit that gives us the power to, to live holy, thanking you for your spirit that gives us the power to declare that demons shall flee. Thank you for giving us your spirit that declares that we shall live and not die. God, we thank you that as we consecrate ourselves in this season, that you meet us at the very point of our need. And God, we'll be ever so grateful as to give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you.